by the man of God. We hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. Thank you. You must preach Christ's obedience for us. Not we obeying. His obedience was on our behalf. So his obedience is our obedience. What we call obedience is what we call belief. When you believe the gospel, what you've done is you have received Christ's obedience. He obeyed. Not as I will. Your will be done. He obeyed for our salvation. When you believe what he has done, his obedience becomes your obedience. That's what the Bible says. You have believed from the heart. That form of doctrine that was given to you. You have believed from the heart. For with the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. So we preach Christ's obedience for us. When you read obedience in the epistles, it means to believe. When you read obedience in the epistles, it means to believe. So how do you obey good news? You don't obey good news. You only give good news. Any good news that you have to obey is no more good news. It means it's a demand. It is good news because there is nothing for you to do than to take. Is it true? That's why it's good news. So you don't obey good news. You receive good news. Once obedience enters, it is no more a finished work. So the obedience is Christ's obedience on our behalf. Am I teaching good? Yeah. Romans chapter 1 verse 5. Look at it. You will see the way brother Paul wrote it. Romans chapter 1 verse 5. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith which is faith in Christ. See the way he uses obedience to the faith among all nations for his name. Look at Romans chapter 5 verse 19. So the gospel is Christ has obeyed God for us. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Christ's obedience made us righteous. Christ's obedience made us righteous. Are you still in the building? So, in sharing the gospel, ensure you are not extracting commitment from anybody. Ensure you are not extracting commitment from anybody. In sharing the gospel, Ensure you are not extracting commitment from anybody. Don't say, are you ready to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? Are you ready to follow Jesus for the rest of your life? You are extracting a commitment. And he doesn't have the ability to say yes to that request. If he did, he wouldn't need Christ. Don't extract a commitment. In the preaching of the gospel, you preach faith. People believe they are saved. You don't extract commitment. Don't ask them, are you ready to surrender all? Are you ready to surrender all? If you are ready to surrender all, say with me. The things I used to do, I do them no more. You have left Christ. You have met Moses and two of you have partnered. Salvation is not the things I used to do, I do no more. Salvation is a resurrection from the dead. Salvation is new life. It's not develop improvement. It's not becoming a better person. Salvation is a brand new life. We are his workmanship created. When you create something, it doesn't have a history. A creation is a new start. Am I teaching good? If I'm teaching good, say I hear you. The people said, what must I do to be saved? Look at the answer. Acts 16, 30. Acts chapter 16, verse 30. And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Four keys to salvation. Number one, be circumcised. Number two, pay tight. 
Number three, confess all your sins. Number four, fall down on the ground and cry with sackcloth and ashes. No, that's not salvation. What must I do to be saved? Look at it. Where we're reading. Give me, give me that scripture again. What must I do to be saved? 31. And they said, believe. Believe. No steps. Salvation is faith in what Christ has done. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved and thy house. Period. Are we in the building here? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So we preach Jesus' crucifixion, his death, his burial, his resurrection for salvation. Don't help the gospel. Just preach the gospel, it will save. Don't help the gospel. Just preach the gospel, it will save. Just preach the gospel, it will save. So Jesus said to the disciples, tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Acts 1.8. You shall receive power. Then you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem. Acts chapter 1 verse 5. For John truly baptized with water. But you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. The Spirit of God is given to us to the intent that we are able to share the gospel of Christ. The Spirit of God is given to us to the intent that we are able to share the gospel of Christ. No man can call Jesus Lord but by the Holy Ghost. No man can call Jesus Lord but by the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 12.3 1 Corinthians 12.3 Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus a cost and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. It's two ways. Number one that is the recipient of the gospel will call Jesus Lord because he has had the right gospel. The recipient of the gospel will call Jesus Lord because he has had the right gospel. So this is, this is it. It takes the spirit of God which we have to share the gospel. It takes the spirit of God which we have to share the gospel. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Do you have the Holy Spirit? If you have the Holy Spirit, shout Holy Spirit. It takes the Holy Spirit which we have to share the gospel. Number two. It takes the Spirit of God which you have for your recipient to believe the gospel. It takes the Spirit of God which you have for your recipient to receive the gospel. First of all, it takes the Spirit of God which you have for you to share the gospel. Number two, it takes the spirit of God which you have for your recipient to believe the gospel. So both you and the recipient, you are all works of the Holy Ghost. It's the work of the Holy Ghost. The spirit equips us to share the gospel. And the spirit will have men to accept the gospel. The spirit equips us to share the gospel. And the spirit helps men to receive the gospel. So comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.